Hello, people. Welcome to the BFL conference room, which is not the trophy room. I'm very glad that you all were able to find us. I posted on WebCT for that. Um, we had to move the event because, as you noticed, there was some stuff going on in the near the student union building. And last semester, when we had an event going on in the trophy room while something like that was happening, it was a terrible intrusion on the speakers. So at the last minute, um, we scrambled to get the room moved. Um, Brian Donovan was able to get the room moved and hopefully have a few signs. So definitely thanks to Brian. This is an event that's also sponsored by Students for Democratic Society on campus. We meet every Wednesday in LA 118. So anybody that's interested in that, please come see it. There's another SDS sponsored event tomorrow um, I know that the student, Michael Thurman, has been working on putting it together with Kathy Kelly, uh, Iraq Vets Against the War. We did a Winter Soldier event like this last semester, tomorrow in the trophy room between 1 and 4. If you can make any time on that, you're welcome to come and listen to veterans talk about their experiences in the war. Um, Brian's over there with an SDS information table. Uh, thanks to my t uh, teaching assistants, Sai, Mike, and Kajal. Kajal's at the back table over there. She has our speaker's book today for sale, David Matheson, and David's giving us the book uh, for anyone that wants to buy it today at a pretty significant discount at only $25. It's just chock full of information. Anybody that wants to get that can get it. Also, um, also my book with Project Censored is back there, Censored 2010. So anybody that wants to get that book, it's for $15, and I'll donate $5 for every sale to the SDS Club for their funds. Um, that said, I wanted to go ahead and just get right to our speaker now. Um, David Matheson, um, David of course is not just a friend of mine, we also sit on the board of directors together at Media Freedom Foundation, which is the nonprofit that helps control Project Censored. Um, David is a former VP of Reuters, which is one of the largest news services in the world. Um, he was CEO of Connecta and raised over $30 million in two years. So uh, Dave is very active in business circles as well as media. Um, he is the author, of course, of the book, Be the Media. And this is what Dave is going to be talking to us all about today, is how you can be the media. And you can see more at bethemedia.com. Passed around a little um, sheet there that just talks about some people that have endorsed Dave over the years and some things they've said about him. Um, and Dave also has just recently spoken, just, not just several universities, and he's going to be at Sonoma State University tonight for the Media Dialogue series. Um, he was recently he recently spoke twice at the United Nations. He spoke at Columbia University. Um, so we're really fortunate to have him here. We're really happy to have him here. And with that, I'd like to introduce to you Mr. David Madison. Hey, happy St. Patrick's Day. Are you all partaking yet, or are you just waiting? I can, stop. I can smell your breath. So anyway, you know. I just spoke at the United Nations twice, like Mickey said. The first time, I thought they'd never have me back, you know? Spoke in front of the UNICEF and UNIFEM and World Bank, World Food Organization. But basically, the Under Secretary General, so very polite man, gets up and says, oh, please, everybody turn off your cell phones. We don't want to distract Mr. David Matheson, you know? And of course, I get up and I say, with all due respect, I want you to all turn your cell phones on right now. So go ahead, turn on your cell phones, take them out. It's always fascinating me to see who reaches and who doesn't. Like, you guys are so shy, right? Don't be afraid. If you have a cell phone, you're allowed to take it out. I totally give you permission, all right? If you want to tweet me, you know, I don't know, how many people are using Twitter? How about Facebook? Online, oh, okay, MySpace. Any podcasters or YouTubers? Uh, anybody watch videos on YouTube? Uh, everybody. Okay, well, who's got a cell phone? Everybody has a cell phone, but only a couple are tweeters, huh? Well, anyway, that's... Uh, they still invited me back a second time. I spoke to the United Nations again in, in January. But basically my point is this, or let me ask you a question. Do you think tweeting during conferences is wrong? Or texting? Who, who here thinks tweeting during a conference is wrong? A couple of people, okay. How many people think taking notes at a conference is wrong? Nobody but it's not okay to tweet, right? So here's, I was at this conference in New York, uh, a fair media conference, and I was actually on the panel, you know, it's one of the panels who was all about Twitter. And uh, the moderator basically, all our tweets are showing up on the screen behind me, you know? And the moderator asks the question to the audience, 
is it rude to tweet during a conference? So I'm actually not in the audience, I'm actually on the panel, you know, and I tweeted his question, right, I put the tweet up. Is it rude to tweet during a conference? And you know, from 2,000 miles away, somebody who wasn't in the room at all, uh, the Director of Communication at the University of Nebraska, his name's Dr. Jeremy Lipschutz, he posts three words, and I, I couldn't see it, you know, my back was to the screen, but all of a sudden I could hear this rustling, like little light bulbs going off, and he said, tweeting is reporting. And that's all he said. And I think people in the room got the message, you know, that in the old days when you were a reporter, you know, you'd have to go and write the story down, and then you'd have to run to the phone bank. Does anybody here remember what phone banks are? Anybody? The yeah, phone bank. Yeah, where you had to put a quarter in, you know, or a dime back in my day. And you'd call in the story, right? And then maybe two days later, three days later, it's on page A17. Well, today you don't have to wait, right? You can instantaneously right now tweet what I'm saying and report it to people outside of this room, people who could actually actively involved in the conversation. So I don't know, it's tweeting, rude, everything's too early to like lay down any dogma. God forbid I should lay down dogma today, it's too new. But I had an interview with uh, Mickey Huff this morning, if you have a chance. I got a radio show up on Blog Talk Radio and there's an interview with Mickey. I've interviewed everyone from uh, Craig's Lists, Craig Newmark, to Jimmy, uh, Jimmy Wales, the founder of Wikipedia and folks like Michelle Schacht and musicians like Jill Sobiel. So it's all free, go up and check out that interview. We, we recorded it today at Mickey's office. <coughs> so this is uh, my Twitter address if you want to follow me. It's Be The Media. A year ago, I think I had 300 followers, and I've got like 29, almost 30,000. And uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about Twitter today and how I sold I don't know, do you want to talk about this? How I sold 5,000 books in 11 days through Twitter. Does anybody want to hear about that or we can talk about other stuff? How about how I got a radio show and I turned down Clear Channel? Anybody here want to hear how I stuck it to the man? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, how about the front page article on the New York Times? Yeah, sure. Do you want to hear about that? Oh, I got it. Actually, it's a good question. How many sales do you think I got? I had a front page article about me in the New York Times business section. It was on 72 papers. The Associated Press carried it. This is on the Honolulu Advertiser, Newark Star Ledger. How many sales, book sales, do you think I got from that? Anyone? 7,000. 7,000? Anyone else? It's cold. He's very cold. <laughs> I got zero sales. So I'm here to tell you why. Make sure that it just does not matter anymore, whether you're trying to get your message out through Twitter or whatever, or trying to sell books, products, or services. So anyway, I'm Be The Media on Twitter if you want to follow me. In. David Matheson and Facebook. And that's really kind of what I'm gonna talk about, I guess a little bit. Maybe we'll get into some citizen journalism too. But Mickey tells me you're all pretty well grounded in, you know, the, the issues of corporate media controlling most of our, you know, what we hear, see, and read. So I'm going to lay off the downside, the negatives, you know, where you want to slice your wrists and jump out the window and light your hair on fire. Because being a media, what I tried to do is, I tried to find all of those solutions, people that aren't using the New York Times, and, that have turned down Clear Channel, and that are making a living for themselves as independent authors, musicians, journalists, filmmakers, and musicians in the crowd. Okay. How many people ever picked up a guitar or played piano in their lives? Ah, but you're not musicians, right? How about writers, any authors? Okay, how many people have a blog, a website? Yeah, okay, but you're not writers, I see. So anyway, that's what we're gonna get into, you know, changing the definitions on things. And basically, I didn't spend a penny on PR, so we'll get into that. But I started to think, you know, I used to work for Reuters. As a, my quick background was I was at Columbia University, grad school, studied a lot of telecommunications especially Japan, but I went to work for this company called Ovid, and we did search, you know, search way before search, you can be Yahoo and Google. But if you were to type in GI bleeding, I'd map you to gastrointestinal hemorrhage, how about that? If you type in heart attack, I'd map you into myocardial infarction, you know what I'm saying? The syntax of medicine, right? If you type in AIDS, we map you into acquired immune deficiency syndrome. Pretty simple, but you don't get all those false hits on hearing aids, nurses aids, band aids, all the crap that Google gives you. So that got bought and uh, for 120 million. And the owner of that has a nice little vineyard up in that. And then I went to Spectrum. That got acquired uh, 120 million by level, level three. So then I went to Reuters. Reuters, I was vice president of syndication. You know what syndication is?